I was about to go to sleep and then I realized that Comser just dropped so much info in the game, the new update notice and five different events for the Witcher's collab. So let's dive right in. I won't be able to stream right when the game update because I really want to sleep or else the stream will be me just being half dead. So I'll see you guys when I wake up tomorrow. We're going to do summon. We're going to play the card game and all that fun stuff. So new update and we are starting off with, oh... They will not take away the max HP scaling for the damage of the Water and Light Panda because I think people were very unhappy about that. So they just decrease the damage greatly. Not sure how that works. So Light Panda is the same unit. Nothing really happened to that unit. Dark Phoenix. And people were so unhappy with them taking away the anti-revive as well. So they're adding back the anti-revive. They could have just put it double hit. It is still a very confusing unit. It doesn't really have a clear role. It is like a anti-revive unit, but then people usually build it for PvE. So the build would not be suitable for guild content. If you want to do guild content with Dark Phoenix, you have to switch build, which is inconvenient. So I think the best way to make Dark Phoenix is just to make it double hit so that it will be one of the best dungeon unit in the game. And... Leave it at that, and I think it's going to be okay. But anyway, anti-revive, great damage. I think that's going to be the Dark Phoenix identity. Anyway, we have full skill of all the Witcher's unit. So let's take a look. First, we'll start off with Fire Geralt. So skill 1 is the attack break. Skill 2 is AoE defense break and attack bar reduction. Skill 3 is AoE damage once again with each hit inflicting dot for two turn. So it's like Rika-ish. Attacking the target under continuous damage, stun the target for one turn with a 50% chance. So it's Rika with despair inbuilt. Whoa. Attacking the target under continuous damage. So the first hit, if you land the dot, the second hit will have 50% chance to stun. The third hit will have another 50% chance to stun. So it's a very good chance to stun if you land the dot in the first hit. If you land the dot in the second hit, then the chance of stun is going to get half. But it's still a very good dot plus stun. No slow debuff though. Still a very, very good skill 3. So I think the fire one is like a Rika with defense break. It feels like that, okay? I'm saying that just to make very simple comparison, but it might be a very different unit when we actually play with it. But right now, I feel like it's going to be an AoE unit with dot, stun, defense break, and attack power reduction with skill 1 that has attack power reduction as well. Very strong overall fire AoE debuff unit, which will potentially compete with Okeanos and Karno and Rika and RTA or Belenus as well with the AoE fire thingy, which is great, but nothing new about the unit. It's still pretty much the same thing, just reshuffling the skill of some other unit pretty much. Still a very strong unit on paper. Water one, we saw that before. I think the water one wants to be like a PvE unit. Hopefully it's going to do good damage, but nothing too crazy. The win one. Okay, skill one is different actually. Attack the enemy to remove one buff granted in a target with a 15% chance. Very small, wouldn't rely on that. Decrease the target attack power. Oh, wait, this one, oh, probably awaken into skill one. So the other two hopefully will awaken into stat then. Skill two, AoE attack. The first attack install a bomb. Oh my, with a 50% chance. Not a huge fan. And the second attack stun all enemy for one turn with a 30% chance. I'm sure they just put that number there so they can buff it later on. Because why would I want to rely on a 50% chance to bomb? Maybe go up to 70%. But I can't even rely on unit that can bomb 100% chance of the time. <laughs> I have two of that. How can I... Not good. When you grant harmful effect on the enemy with your skill, grant yourself with a shield immunity or counter attack for two turns. You don't even know what you are granting yourself with, with the skill, because it's random between shield immunity or counter attack. So, if the effect is not already applied to yourself. Oh, if so, if you have shield and immunity, like a Wusa buff, then you will always buff counter attack. That is... Okay, not a huge fan of this unit. Nothing about this unit is guaranteed, so not a huge fan. The Light Gerald. 
Okay, attack break, skill one, skill two is AoE defense break and attack by reduction, skill three, adrenaline rush. Stack one adrenaline score whenever you attack the enemy up to five score. At three or higher adrenaline, I can't say that word properly. At three or higher score, the skill two will be used regardless of the cooldown time. You lose one score and increase your attack power by 30% whenever you attack by the enemy. Oh, so... He will stack one score whenever he attacks the enemy up to five. Not sure if he start with one or he start with zero. So if he start with one, he start with zero. He attack all enemy three times. I'm sure it's gonna max out at five. So does he use that skill two again if he attack in the first turn, which is gonna make him pretty good. If he attack first turn, get a decent amount of score, and then attack with a skill two again, get a decent amount of score. That might be cool. Okay? And when he get attacked, he get attack bar and he lose one of the score thingy. Makes him pretty cool, I would say. Um, Fun little AoE light debuff unit. Not sure how consistent the defense break or the attack bar reduction will be, but seems fun on paper. The dark one is going to be the bomb skill. Skill one is going to be increase the duration of harmful effect granted on enemy with a 15% chance. Not a huge fan. Skill 2 with the bomb and a stun with a low chance. Not a huge fan as well. Increase the duration of beneficial effect granted by skill on yourself by one turn. Additionally, increase the damage dealt to the enemy by 20% and the harmful effect activation rate by 10% for every buff granted on yourself. Okay, he fixed his own inconsistency with getting more buff, which is great. However, your HP decreased by 10% if you gain a turn while you're granted with 3 or more beneficial effect. So you lose some HP, but then he's an HP type bomber. Interesting. Now you've got a farm for HP artifact with bomb damage. Hmm. But with that extra harmful effect rate in the, in the passive, it makes him not as bad as the win one. So still not a huge fan though. Okay. I don't like bomb thingy. That doesn't guarantee me anything. I like the fire. I like the light. The water is okay. Everyone's going to have one no matter you like it or not. So hopefully I get the fire. And I don't want to win one. That's pretty much it. Siri. Okay. Oh my god, my phone actually activated. <laughs> Fire 4-star unit. Skill 1 is damage according to speed. And glancing hit debuff. Skill 2 is attack the enemy 3 times to deal damage scale with speed. And enemy max HP. This is supposed to be a PvE thing. Skill 3. Crit rate increase in proportion to your attack speed. Oh, I wonder... How much she gonna get? Maybe 50%? If your crit rate exceed 100%, your critical damage increased by the exceeded amount. Oh! Oh, that's also pretty good. Just build her as high crit as possible, and then you get free crit damage. Or you just build her with low crit rate and get max crit rate with the passive, potentially. But max HP scaling. I wonder if she's gonna hit really hard on bosses, potentially make her a new PvE unit. But then most PvE team are built with very minimal speed. You want the least amount of speed possible on your PvE unit to do damage on the enemy the most possible. So I'm not sure about this unit in particular at the moment. Maybe. Maybe she might be PvE friendly. Who knows? Skill, I mean, Water 1 is a 5-star unit. We have attacked the enemy two times according to attack speed, glancing hit, debuff of skill one. Skill two, deal damage and ignore defense. I think we saw this one already. I'm not too sure. But you need to be faster than the enemy to ignore more defense. And the passive, your attack will always land as a critical hit when you attack the enemy with slower attack speed than you. Oh my, just slower and you always crit. Critical hit will occur when you are attacked by the enemy with slower... Oh my god, they can't even crit you if they're slower than you. And you always crit them. And the skill 2 can ignore defense as well. So just give her speed buff. And she will instantly be faster than the enemy. And she always crit. And give her a attack buff. And she will absolutely destroy them. It feels like Taor or Chimera. That is very cool though. That That is like... Mi Yang as well kind of thing when you are guaranteed to crit. But, wow, that, that that's great. And she ignored defense. So that's going to make her the new one-shot unit in one of those double sniper comp for guild content. Instantly very, very strong in that kind of team. So I think this she's going to be great. I want to get her. The win one. 
is the same. The skill two is also ignore defense. The skill three is attack all enemy two times and decrease their attack speed. Also very good. Though the wind one is also pretty good as well because she can slow enemy down. She does damage going to speed and she can ignore defense. I think I like that a lot. Okay. The light one. Wow, the water and the wind one are both ignore defense damage to the speed scaling. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. The light one, we have skill 2 that also the ignore defense skill and skill 3. After attacking an enemy on your turn, attack additionally to deal damage that increase as the target HP status decrease and increase your attack speed by 20 each, up to 200. Huh? She can stack up to 200 more speed on a speed scaling ignore defense damage dealer thingy. She can stack up to 200, but then she doesn't get the cool passive. She can still die. But I guess, I think if you want to build her as a bruiser, you can build her, make her very, very fast and tanky. But oh my god, she can stack up, up to 200 speed and her skill 1 scale with speed directly. Oh my god. What did they... What? You can get a 500 speed unit very easily with this thing. Fire Monkey stack up to like 100 speed more. This girl stack up to 200. But she need to attack the enemy to do that. So not going to be easy. Not going to be easy like the Fire Monkey stack. Fire Monkey stack very, very quickly. But this one, she has to attack the enemy. So she has to attack the enemy 10 times. Or if she violent proc, then maybe 5 times. But wow. Sounds very scary on paper. Not sure how that's going to turn out in real combat though. The dark one, we have skill 2 that attack enemy 3 times to do damage according to attack speed and max HP. Skill 3 will attack all enemies and remove all their buff and decrease their attack. Strip into slow debuff. Okay, but no attack by manipulation, not that crazy. Skill 2 doesn't really do anything that works with skill 3. The dark one seems like bad, but she's a dark unit. Oh, she's a dark unit 4 star that can strip and slow. Okay, might be a new guild defense meta thing because she's skilled speech so she's perfect for Mi Yang Shiklet or Clara chilling whatever nonsense because they would love to have her slow debuff okay you know what the dark one seems very good for guild content defense right now thanks to the strip the slow debuff and the speed scaling damage wow this family is amazing except for the fire one not a huge fan of that but seems very cool as well with the passive that give her free crit rate this entire family is amazing I would say. Yennefer. Okay. Fire is going to be a 5-star unit. Skill 1 have silence with a 50% chance. Skill 2, oblivion and absorb attack bar. Not too bad. The absorb attack bar is not consistent. The oblivion will probably go up to 100. Skill 3 is a passive steel buff when you attack the enemy and spread harmful effect granted on a... Whoa! To a random target with a 50% chance. But... Hmm, if she attack, she can strip Oblivion, spread that to a random unit. If you land all your coins correctly, okay? If you toss your coin and land all the things that you want, the first turn, you can strip Oblivion, steal some attack bar, and spread the Oblivion to a random target. And that can be quite something. And if the enemy have a lot of harmful effect, you can spread all of that to a random enemy, I think. But random enemy though, the random enemy might have immunity so you will not spread anything. But still, sounds very fun on paper and another Oblivion unit. The water one is a 5 star as well. We have Silence, we have Oblivion. Oh my god, another Oblivion. And attack bar absorption. Attack all enemies 3 times. Each hit will stun them with a 50% chance and preventing them from removing harmful effect. Stun and blocking them from cleansing the stun. Oh my god. Wow, Oblivion... Stun, block, cleanse, and silence. Gonna be great for combo with my Layla. I want this unit. Oh, wow. Very, very anti-passive meta. This is like a boost to CC calm with speed scaling damage dealer and oblivion. And wow. The win one is a four-star unit. We have silence. We have remove one or four effect from oil allies and shield. We have AoE, Glancing Hit, and Branding. Not a huge fan, 4-star unit only. You're probably going to get that. I'm personally not a huge fan. Light one is going to be a 4-star unit. Let's see if she's going to be meta and siege. We have Silence. We have Oblivion. Oh my! That's going to be the enemy of 
those windy tractor uh, Jotan Raccoonie team. And when enemy cleanse, beneficial effect granted on the target are removed together. Oh, so if you are using Lulu again, this thing, when you cleanse uh, your tractor, then you will lose all your funny buff as well. Increase the attack bar. Wow, so this unit will move a lot and it will keep oblivioning you and your team. Okay, interesting. Wonder if she's going to make it in defense or she's going to be an offense unit. But offense, usually you don't need oblivion for guild content. But for defense, you might throw her on and she will do the oblivion on the very strong passive offense meta. Five star is a, a dark one. Is going to be a five star? We have silence, we have shield, and we have cleanse. We have AoE stun and slow and decrease the skill cool time of the skill three if you don't get attacked during the enemy turn. I wonder if she can spam this skill all the time, which can be quite interesting to see. All right, Jennifer looking really good with the water fire. I don't really like the wind one. I like the LD one as well. Wow. These, these are very good. We have more Oblivion unit, which is kind of amazing. Lastly, we have Trish. Very funny. In the introduction paragraph of this whole thingy, they give so much description to all these characters. And then there is Trish with zero description. And she looks so hot. <laughs> anyway, man, she looks all the same. It's just a different book color. Fire is going to be five star. We have heal block. We have stun and defense break. And we have... Attack all enemy to reset their attack bar and brand them and glancing hit. Wait, isn't that the same thing with the Jennifer win? AoE glancing and branding. AoE glancing and branding and attack bar reset. That's kind of weird. But I'll take that. Not a huge fan of this unit in particular. I don't feel like there's any real use at the moment. But maybe there will be. Maybe there will be. Water 4-star support. We're probably going to get this unit a lot. So we have Flame Burst. We have Dot for two turns. And removing half of... We have Cleanse Block for two turns. Huh. With a Dot, though. I don't feel the Dot that much. Passive. If the enemy take damage from the Dot, when it gains a turn, inflict Dot on a random enemy target, excluding the target for two turns. Oh. However, this effect does not accumulate additionally. Oh, which means if it Violent Proc... You don't spread one more dot, I think. I don't know. Additionally, removing one buff with a 50% chance whenever you attack the enemy on your turn. Oh, she can strip with her her attack with a 50% chance. Ah, uh, But then her debuff are not very lethal. It's like a dot and a heal block and a cleanse block. Is that very scary? So far, not a huge fan. No real use at the moment. But maybe you will find some, some use in guild content potentially. The win one. Four star as well. Oh, you probably have this. Attack enemy to heal block. Skill two with the dot and the cleanse block. And firestorm. Attack all enemy two to four times to put dots on the enemy. Increase your attack by ten percent in proportion to the number of dots. In isn't it just the win Ashura? He kind of does the same thing, right? I can't remember, but I feel like he does the same thing. But so she has AOE dots and she has single target dots and heal block. Uh, it really feels like the win Ashura, which is not really used that much except for like Siege Defense and not really that good, I think. So, so far I don't like any of the Trish at all, even though she looked kind of hot. We have the Light Support 5-star, we have Heal Block, we have the Dot and the Cleanse Block, we have another Passive and the 5-star here. If enemy take Dot damage when they gain a turn, decrease the HP of all enemies, excluding the target by half the damage dealt. Oh, so if you put Dot on a very tanky bruiser, it does potentially maybe 5,000 damage per tick, and then you will do half of that to everyone else. Nah, uh -huh. You need to put like a lot of Dots, and then it's going to hurt, maybe. However, this effect does not accumulate and does not apply in boss battle. Huh. Does not accumulate. So if he has like 5 Dots, and 5 Dots tick at the same time, the enemy will not take that much damage. Additionally, inflict more dots for two turns whenever you attack the enemy. He, she doesn't even have the AoE attack. She's a single target thing. Not a huge fan of this thing in particular as well. Maybe the damage will be really good in real battle, but I doubt. Okay? Dark one. Attack the enemy with, with heal block, stun, and defense break. This one's way better. AoE damage with 
Dots. Wow, the whole family is all about dots. This attack ignores the defense in proportion to the number of harmful effect granted on the enemy target. Oh, so if they have a lot of debuff, she will ignore defense. Lucian just do that without any condition. <laughs> Such a roundabout way to do AoE, ignore defense damage. But I guess that's cool if you can set it up. Don't like a single one in this family, to be honest. I like this one and Yennefer and the fire Gerald at the moment. I'm going to get a lot of trash. I can feel it already. Now I say that. Collab exclusive building with the mission and the new card game. I'm so excited to play it. Not sure how fun, how good it's going to be. But it's new and I'm I'm going to have a lot of fun. Hopefully. If you play new content, you will get free stuff. Which is scoring there, legendary runes and grindstone and some other small things. We have the Witcher mission as well. So you can get even more free stuff. And we have the new event dungeon that's going to be... You, you saw that in the previous update notice already, okay? So it's pretty much the same thing. And we have Raid Up, which is not really real. New emotes that doesn't look... Oh, wow, there's a one... Is he in a swimsuit? That one looks pretty cool. I like that one. The rest... Uh, it's okay. Not, nothing too crazy, I would say. We have new Siege Battle. Monster Limited. Valkyria cannot be used in the... So specific. Wow. You can block Camilla from the from the defense altogether. Can't wait to see because I'm now in the top four, top six guild. So I need to really care about these potentially. Just gonna lead the, listen to my guild leaders and make the defense that they wanna make. But can't wait to see Siege Tournament gameplay. I hope you guys are excited as well because that's my first time. This will be my first time trying super hard in Siege. And then we have some other quality of life things, new package, and whatever, right? Okay, so there are going to be five different events for the collab from part one to part five. So part one, you will just play the game, do the summon, buy packs, and you're going to get the token. And with the token, you're going to get a pretty good Fatal Blade rune set, like the slot four, and the slot 6 are not too bad, okay? I think slot 3 are not bad as well. Slot 1 is very good bomber rune. Slot 2 is not bad, you know, efficient roll. Very decent fatal blade set for new player or just casual player in general. Very, very good rune set. And you get collab scroll. I think you get LD scroll here as well. And you can get new emojis. And we're moving on to part 2. So part two, okay, can't see it properly. Part two is just get more witches token and you can skill up the character. This is the cool part, right? You can skill up the character and you can switch the skill up with all the collab characters. I think it's all the witches collab, not like all the, all the collab, but it's going to be amazing. Or you can skill them up to the max, which is amazing. Oh my god, that is one of the biggest problems with getting a new unit in Summoners War is you don't get the skill up for some of the support unit and they are pretty useless. But with the event, you can max a unit skill and if you summon more than one collab monster, you can try out the other unit by switching the skill level with the other unit and try them out. And that is crazy. And you can switch back if you don't like the other unit that you summon. Switch that back. Oh my god, this is such genius. So good. <laughs> and if you like both of them, you probably can use the event to just max both of them as well. And you can try the other one that you might have summoned. And that is so, so cool. Can we get this for our normal unit? Like maybe a one time a month, you switch the skill up to something else. Oh my God. I have... Wow, this is... This part two is amazing, okay? You don't need Devilmon. That is awesome for me. I, I don't have a lot of Devilmons like the whale, so this event to me seems really, really fun. Part three is the Collab Special Shop event. So you unlock shop as you exchange for things, and you get Devilmon, you get LD Scroll, and you get Witcher Scroll, Legendary Scroll, and more Devilmon, and more of the other stuff that might be good, might be trash the moment you get them, like Legendary Rune that you can't really see the stat. But most important, Event part three is just scroll, scroll, and a lot of scroll. And bonus shop is going to be rune piece and a known scroll. But overall, part three, all about that scroll. Part four, play the Quen Went. I, I don't know how to read the name properly. Play the card game, okay? And you will get 
Morse Girl, which is pretty amazing as well. Wait, I think I probably missed the part where they give you the free water jar, but it's probably in there. I probably missed that, but you probably saw that and you're wondering why I don't say anything about it. It's probably in there, okay? And then we have part five, where you get bonus bonus mystical scroll when you summon, pretty standard stuff, and you get some more scroll when you do the other thing here as well. So just more scroll for you to summon. That is pretty much it. Very amazing event. So many free stuff. And if you're starting summoners well, right now, amazing Tam and balance patch coming as well. And hey, I think that's the sign that I need to update the game, go to sleep, wake up tomorrow, and give you guys a banger stream. Thank you so much for watching. And wait, hold up. I can update the game right now and see the base speed of all these units. Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Okay. Potentially go to... This is like, I don't want to cut this part out, you know? <laughs> That's going to take like another half an hour for me to re-render this and just waste a lot of time. And I'm like really falling asleep right now. The, the clock is ticking in my brain. I really want to sleep. So I probably won't cut this part out. I use App Gallery to install summoners for so I can buy pack cheaper. This part is not sponsored by App Gallery, but it's just what it is. I do that and get packs at a slightly cheaper price. And you might want to do that as well because it's just how it is. <laughs> I actually use the service, okay? If I can get like a $5 discount, whatever, I'll, I'll do it because it's, it's important. All right, the game is about to update. We can see the skill, I mean the... Awakening and the base speed of some of these units and see whether they are really, really good or not because some unit might have a 110, 115 base speed and that will change a lot about... Oh, we can get to see the... Oh my god, the the, the lore of the <laughs> the new collab. There are no sound right now because who the hell plays Summoner with sound on, okay? So do I skip this part or do we watch this part because... <laughs> there are no story in this game. Like I never feel very compelled to like watch the story in in this game. But I guess there are some sort of story going on. They are literally isekaiing the witch's character into the summoners of the universe. How did the Cookie Run Kingdom thing end up? Okay. I saw the Assassin's Creed jump from the boat down to the island. That's all what I remember. But here they are summoning some dark monster. Oh, this is probably like the dark society that summoned these monsters. And we need professionals. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, so we we saw some monster and we 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 hire some machi machinery and they're here to defeat the monster for us, okay? Man, it's not even animation. It's just like PowerPoint, right? This is like PowerPoint. I wish there are like some sort of high budget The Witcher animation going on. All right, we got the female Witcher. Oh, wait, can I say that? I can't say that, right? We have Yennefer, and then she's calling for Trish. I don't like a single one of you in this game. And Gerard at the end. And we should be ready to embark on this new journey because they are literally getting isekai to the war of Sky Arena. All right, I think I can skip this one now. And here comes the building, baby. Look at that. So they are just going to rift into our war. Oh my God, that looks pretty cool. Okay, now this is the animation I was looking for, okay? Where they walk into this war and not just PowerPoint slides. That looks pretty cool. Hello. Excuse me, but who are you? So they chase the monster and they end up here. And yep, yep. I want to see your stats, woman. <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the dialogue is actually complicated. Now I want to see the monsters. All right. So we have the card game and the witches thingy. We have the... Events showing up as well. All these cool things happening already. All right. 
Of course, the best thing about the new collab is the new pack, guys. The new packs. Anyway, let me take a look quickly at the stat of this guy. 100 base speed. Not sure if he awakened to accuracy, but hopefully he does. And they all have elemental leader skills, so it's not too unfair. And they all have 100 base speed. I think the wind one and the dark one awaken into their skill, or their skill might be different. But I hope they awaken into their stats, potentially. So 100 base speed, nothing too crazy. We have the Oblivion Queen with 103 base speed. And we have Arena leader skill. Any speed? No speed. This one is attack leader skill. So HP critical rate. Ah, oh, not a huge fan of that. Accuracy. But the HP one seems really, really interesting, though. And the speed scaling damage dealer. That is going to be very interesting to see. 106. They are all 106. Very fast, but not broken. They have guild content leader skill. Oh, my God. Okay, they don't have broken guild content leader skill. They, If one of them have speed, it's going to be insane. Oh, there's one. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Strip. AOE strip slow deep. Is that slow debuff? Slow debuff and speed leader. She's going to be popular. She is going to be popular. Oh my god. She's going to be in the next Siege tryhard defense meta. I can feel that. Because of this skill and this leader skill combined together. And she's dark. So useful in all kind of team building. All right. I can see that these two are going to be very, very highly wanted. And lastly, the mages. Let's see what they're... 101 base speed, nothing too crazy. They have the overall leader skill. We have a speed leader. Oh, only 21% because of the four star and the five star family thingy. And she has a very not so cool skill set, I would say. Wasted on that one. <laughs> uh, I don't like any one of this, to be honest. So not a huge fan of her skill and her leader skill. All right. That is pretty much it. I think this guy... And the other things that I really want to get, I still really want to get. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.